Hello everybody and thank you for coming back. Um, really appreciate you. Um, I went and I filmed uh, step A um, all the way through um, A1 all the way through 13 and uh, I used my GoPro but um, something happened with the film um, so I can't retrieve it and it's pretty messed up so uh, I'm going to continue on with um, step B one and uh, and just give you guys an, an overview of uh, what, uh, what what totally entailed with uh, step A. Uh, with step A <clears throat> what I did is this kit comes with uh, a differential with gears and they're really nice gears really I mean if you look at it right here uh, really well made a um, whole lot better than some other brands I've uh, I've worked with um, they, they look really really strong um, but what I did is I I put a locker in the front of this rig and um, the rig already comes with the locker in the back um, I'm not gonna lock the transmission um, only because I don't have another locker all right so <clears throat> I'm not gonna lock the transmission um, I locked the front differential and uh, so just like on real real live uh, one-to-one -one rigs um, you know with the front differentials being locked and the rear locked um, you know the transmission kind of compensates for the front and the rear I thought maybe I could run it like that and uh, see what happens now if I if I find that I really need to lock the transmission I can always take it apart and um, put a locker in the transmission I'll most likely order one just in case just because um, I might want to do that later alright okay so so far putting this uh, kit together uh, I can tell you that um, I would definitely get addicted to doing kits only um, this kit um, unlike the last kit I did, uh, which I have not posted, um, is just, it's extremely well thought out. Um, this truck is um, beefy um, from what I can see so far. I have not completed the whole thing yet. I'm sure there's going to be some upgrades that need to be done, but I am, you know, a person needs to consider that um, this kit is actually a pro kit so it comes with upgrades um, that are commonly put in to this rig already in the kit um, so if you're wanting to see how the differential goes together uh, no fear um, when we come to the transmission we'll be doing the same thing because it has the same type of differential in the transmission to transfer the the power to the front or the rear okay um, what I did is uh, when I put this together um, I really like the scale uh, calipers and rotors they were kind of cool um, I know they're kind of like you know not useful or anything but you know still they're kind of cool um, I like the beefy uh, links on the top here and uh, on the on the bottom it, they are really well made as well um, this whole thing has gone together so far really well not a hitch to it not no trimming nothing of that sort um, is just worked so um, with that um, I'm just gonna say uh, let's move on to step B and put step A behind us and we'll call this episode 2 All right, so in episode two, step B, B1, we have the differential. Uh, the differential for the rear, for the rear. Um, so what we're looking for is uh, B1 and bag A. And here I have B1 bag A. All right, so we'll cut that open. And I'm going to use the 
the magnet tray. I don't have a magnet mat right now. Um, I hope to get one soon. It really would be nice to have one in this particular situation, but I don't. So um, we're going with these magnetic trays. I bought these little magnetic trays at the at where I work, and uh, yeah, they have John Deere logos on. Them. See. Um, so you can guess I work at a uh, John Deere de John Deere dealership. All right, so this is uh, basically the rear differential, and this is locked. So anybody who cares to will uh, be walking you through uh, how this uh, rear differential goes together. All right. Okay, so. My table is going to have all kinds of like carving marks in it when I'm all done. Alright, so here we have, according to the picture right here, um, we have the housing. And with the housing, they say um, an O ring goes in here. And we have two O rings right here. Alright. So, we stick the O-ring in here. In the housing, we'll put, according to the instruction, the locker right here. That goes in next. All right, seamless. Okay, lockers in. Um, next is another O-ring that goes into the ring gear. Now, some people may call this something else in the RC world, but in the real world where I where I've been working, um, I've been working in trucking for mm, 25 plus years and been wrenching the whole time. My toolbox is right behind me. Um, this is called a ring gear, all right? And with that ring gear, we need to put the other old ring in. So we'll just slip that in there like that. This is like a silicone old ring, so it's very pliable and it'll most likely last a really long time. Um, if I ever have to rebuild this, I could most likely reuse it again, uh, unless it's leaking for some reason. All right, so <clears throat> and then we have the gasket right here, and the screws to go in. These screws on the front differential on step A uh, were kind of frustrating, but. That's all right. I mean, I didn't have a very good screwdriver. I used um, used this one, and the tip of it's not right. So now I have my my little snap-on one. Um, you know, like the the purplish uh, pink color. I'll, I myself just try to get over it and move on. All right. So. We're going to get one of the holes lined up. And what I did on the, the front differential, which I think I'm going to do right now, is I did put some um, oil in the front differential. Only because if by chance I decide I wanted to run an open front diff or open, uh, or, well, if I wanted to run an open rear differential, um, if water did get in there, it would help. Um, alleviate some of the rust that may be created so I I decided to uh, put some oil in here so I'm gonna do that same thing here um, I'm gonna stick this in the tray though I'm not putting very much in just enough make it 
you know, kind of rust resistant. So, all right. So I got that in. Put the gasket back on. And put the ring gear on. So it shows the ring gear facing the differential housing. And on the front differential, this is kind of a bugger as well. I'll just thread that through. It'll pull the gasket up where it belongs, like so. And then I just go and line up one hole. Just gotta get the screw started. And this screwdriver is working so much better. Okay, so I got that one started. Now I'll go on and get the next one started directly across from it. Nope, and I missed a hole. That's one thing to watch out for. Now I gotta take it off. I remember doing uh, step A, the front differential, this actual uh, differential itself was probably the most time consuming of everything. It might be a good thing that, uh, you know, my video got screwed up. I almost wish these were hex. Not Phillips. All 
All right, so I got two in, as you can see. <coughs> Let me go and throw the other two in, and uh, we can move on to the next step. One more to go. My magnetic tray, magnetic tray will be empty. So there you are, one housing together. Okay, so next step says, <clears throat> step B2 is that I need to put a bearing on this back side. Like so. And then we got a washer. and a berry on the front side. Okay? Just like that. Alright, so that, that's done. And then we put it into the differential. Differential comes just like this. This cover comes right off. And I'm thinking that this thing only goes together one way, I hope. Because if you get it together the wrong way, uh, guess what? It will it will spin backwards. And I've done that before, and it's like, holy crap, what did I do? Alright. So, alright, so I'm looking at the orientation on the page here. Um, spike here. Okay, so I'm trying to match up the orientation on the picture with the orientation on the uh, axle itself and it looks like I set it in there upside down. So I'll flip it around, set it back in there. Alright. So step B3, we go with the axles. And the axles right here. Now, just for build sake or any kind of RC that anyone has bought, in, when have you seen axles that thick? I mean, really, it's going to take like a tremendous amount of power to bust that, right? So, in the next step, um, step B3, we need. Step B, B. Well, I'm going to need bearings. And B, B has the bearings. So, in that case, in this particular instance, it's not very clear. That's the only complaint I have about the instructions is that it's not clear. It's all pictures. It doesn't tell you what bag things are in or where you should go to get them. Um, I did go over the Viterra kit uh, before I, you know, before I started filming, and uh, that one actually 
is in English and in picture, so it's a good deal. Alright, so we have a C clip that goes on here, right about there. We have to put that on. going to fight me. It's very small. And C clips are a bugger anywhere. help with the pair of needle nose, bent needle nose, uh, the clip is on. We'll do the other side. Let's see what we can do here. Alright, they're both on. That was pretty painless, huh? Just make sure it's really well seated. We don't want this clip to come off on you. Alright. Okay, so and then we have bearings. Inner. Collar, which I went and put on the axle. Collar, which doesn't look like it's, you know, respective to uh, side, so the collar can go on. Uh, then another bearing on the outside. Before I put that in, I'm going to use what I did yesterday when with the film that didn't work. A little bit of chain loop to help protect that pocket right in here, because I can see that being a problem. We got some chain lube in there, and we slip this other bearing in, and it fits really nicely, just like it's made to be there. All right, then we do the other side. Bearing. Chain loop. And another bear. <coughs> I suppose I probably could have used grease in there, but you know, the reason why I use the chain loop, I know a lot of uh, channels out there say something else, but uh, like marine grease or whatever, marine grease is just uh, so thicky and sticky. It's not thick and sticky, and it it makes your your motor run so much harder just to do what it needs to do to move your car. So I don't like to use marine grease or anything of that sort um, on the RC cars because uh, really the more freewheeling everything is, the better off you are. Okay, so B3 is complete. We'll move on to B4 before everyone else. All right. So we're going to put the axles in. <clears throat> so we just slide them in, line it up, the differential there. And everything goes together nice and smooth. There you are. Look at that. And the other side.
other side, speaking for a three. There we go. Now it went in. It's an extremely tight fit, which I'm not going to complain about at all. Alright. Alright, so we have the axles, and there's a couple screws, which I did not see in that bag. Maybe they're in, nope, they're not in this bag. Maybe they're in BC. They're uh, M3 by 16. Okay. And they're a countersunk screw. Oh, that size. I'll need four. Alright, four of them. And then I'll need a driver for it. Okay. There we are. Now, like I um, I mentioned while I was filming in um, step A about these screws in plastic, said not to over tighten them um, because it's only plastic. I don't really use a drill driver very much anymore. I did at first. I mean, I watched everybody do it like everybody else did. And um, I saw how quick everything was. And even at the lowest, and I found that even at the lowest torque setting, it was too much. So it's better to use just a driver like this and uh, run it in by feel. Now when you feel the resistance getting, you know, great enough where it feels like it's tight, then stop. Okay, one side done. And the other side. <laughs> and a person might feel like, damn, this is a lot, but, you know, just suffer through it. Be alright. All right. Now I tightened this up. There was a little gap right here. You could see light through it. I tightened it up until I could not see light. That's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so this looks really good. Feels really good. Let's move on. 
Okay, step B5. Uh, looks like we're going to put the uh, pinion together and uh, into this housing right here. Alright, so where we start is that we have a shim somewhere. There it is. <clears throat> okay, so the shim, oh, one more bearing, comes up and goes right here, slides all the way up to the end. And then we have a bearing. Goes in, slides all the way up to the end. And then, it looks like we just stick this through here. Moving nice and smooth. And here again, I'm going to take some of my chain lube right here and squirt it in there. Because there's a, another dry pocket in between them bearings. And any kind of help as far as the elements go, you know, we'll help you out later. Okay, then the outer bearing goes in, like so. Wipe off uh, the SS chain lube. Then we put it together. Now the instructions does do not say. Um, well, it does say clear grease on the on the pinion, uh, not on the ring gear. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little little everything. I'm going to put some of this grease in here. So, and like I said in the last step, it didn't turn out. Um, I probably put too much in, but that's all right. No matter me. <clears throat> they have some. It says to put clear grease on. And instead, I'm going to take uh, and put a little bit of this dif differential oil in here from another kit. Okay, this will help keep everything fluid and on everything. And then I will take the chain lube here and spray it in there. Okay, and once we get the chain lube on, Put the cover on, snaps right in place. Wipe off the excess. There may be some leakage after the fact, but I mean, really, you can't really oil it too much. I mean, I'm here in Louisiana. I mean, we get our uh, uh, drought periods, but um, in wintertime, when it's raining, it's raining. And uh, I don't just stay in the house. I'm out there in the rain. I'm running these things. <clears throat> and I have one to prove what happens when you don't maintain your vehicle after you've submerged it. Um, but we'll go over that in another episode. Okay, so now we have four button screws. They're not button mitt screws, they're um, regular, regular knurled screws. Okay, there's three. We found one more. One more. There it is. Alright. So we got this. 
wrong one. Next driver. And we just gotta run these up. Okay, one down. Looks like everybody's home. Last one. That's done. All right, so Step B5, we put this cover on. Um, B6, we're putting these uh, really nifty rotors and calipers on. Um, I put one side on already, um, and we'll just go through and put the other side on right now. Um, the one thing in the instructions that um, well, I guess I misread was I went and I put this axle truss on and it didn't need to be on there yet um, because it got in the way um, of, the, of the driver uh, putting these screws in so uh, I took it back off and I put them on and there you are alright so uh, put this other rotor on and there's a washer that goes in behind it like so and this goes on here the rotor goes on and screws from the back side
reason why I couldn't put the truss on is because of the angle of the screw uh, when I'm putting this on is uh, too great and I you know, without like a ball end oops drop the bolt without a ball end um, driver um, would have never gotten it on so let's get this side tight Disc, the other or one caliper. Uh, oh, we don't want that one. We want a different one. That I can't find. Oh, no, that ain't it. Hold on. So, um, Losi was kind enough to give us um, this uh, bag of extra hardware, which I really appreciate because um, the, the last kit I built, um, there was just enough. And when I say just enough, I mean just enough and there wasn't enough. And uh, it seems that um, I didn't do enough investigation and um, but found out after the fact that uh, the model had been discontinued and um, that there was no parts available for it. Um, there are parts available. It's just uh, they are uh, really hard to find. And when you do find them, um, they disappear like immediately. Sorry. All right. So thanks to this. Uh, bag of extra hardware I have enough to finish putting this caliper on Important thing is to make sure it's lined up with the hole. Right now it looks like it is. It wasn't before. Alright. So that's on. We're looking good there. Alright. Uh, so now we have to put the hex on. And the hex goes on. You see this uh, this piece right here, and that um, the side with the extrusion out. That goes on the inside, like so. And we need to make sure it locks in place, so that the um, brake caliper and rotor. Um, all line up. Then we put the the pin in right here. A little Loctite on it. Okay, this bit fits just fine. Grab this handle. And 
line up the hole. Okay, with the hole lined up, Loctite on, screw it down. And do not over tighten. You might feel a rust spot, but if you over tighten, you'll find that you'll have a heck of a time getting these back out if you need to. Alright, so there you are. The, this end, that end, it's all done. Alright, so I'll put the truss on for the links. backwards. So flip that bad boy around, put it on the right way, and look, it fits. Yeah, there you are. Okay, three more to go. Okay, so um, when putting this on, there are three longer screws, one here, here, and here, and the shorter one goes right in the center, right up here. Okay, so there you are. Uh, we got the rotors and the calipers on. We have the truss on. Uh, it's time to move on to the next step. Okay, next step. Uh, looks like the lower controlling arms. Um, I did put one set together already. All right, but I left one not, just so you can see what we have to do to take care of that. Um, what we have are these ball ends right here. They need to be snapped into place. You have to push pretty hard, like that. Okay. Um, and the other one, same way. There we go. And as you could hear by that that snap, uh, they go in really hard. So. They're not meant to come back out again. Um, if you run your truck and you find that they do come out, um, you have another problem. All right, so we got those in. Now we'll put the lower, con I guess with B9, we'll put the lower control arms on and the upper control arms on. Okay, so 
with that, we'll go with, we have, well, four more screws. Um, we have four of these TLR 911s, uh, M3 by 20s. I have four of those. I have four nuts. I'm not sure where this one goes. Did I miss a step? I don't know. Maybe we need to backtrack a little bit. And make sure. Not seeing anything that was missed. This could be just, I don't know, random screw. We'll put this in this bucket right here. Alright, so let's move on. Okay, so the flat part is facing up. The rounded part is facing down. Um, when we have the axle like this, we start here. And for now, I'm just going to shove these bolts through. I'm not going to put any kind of nuts on them yet. I'm just going to shove them through. And I'm going to shove them through. Make sure to make. I'm going to make sure they're all going the same direction. <coughs> because, um, well, that's important to me at least. And it may end up interrupting with something later. I don't know. So. To have them all going in the same way uh, just kind of makes sense. Alright, let's fight with it. There we go. Two lower ones are in. The upper links. Okay, so other than this uh, link mount, um, the actual links themselves are another upgrade part that comes with this pro kit and uh, they just fit right in here um, where stock location is supposed to be it looks like it should be front middle so front middle being Here. Let's get the links in place. Front, middle, be kind of like a median. Um, a person can always change this if they want to later. Um, but front, middle, is what we want and I'll show you what I mean by that just a moment okay all right front middle being right here front hole since the truck is up this direction front hole middle position okay all right so <clears throat> Now they come with nylock nuts again, uh, which is good. I mean, if I, if you ever, if a, if you ever need to take this apart, um, and you reuse the nuts, um, I always use Loctite on. Okay, so we got that one started. I'm gonna have another one to get started. Come on. 
Okay, so those are started. I started, what I mean by started is that um, I started threading the nut on to the bolt. Like so. This one's not so bad because there's quite a bit more room. Alright. When I get the bolt started, then I can go ahead and finish tightening it up. Some might call this like a mock fitment. If there was something that you're building your, you know, on your own for scratch, um, some may call it a mock fit. Mock fit meaning uh, we're going to see how it, you know, would go together, not necessarily how it does go together. That's the wrong driver. All right. All right. One down. Two down. These top ones that were hard to get started to begin with. Definitely do not turn the wrong way because if you're having trouble with it like I did, uh, that'll be that'll do nothing but frustrate you. Just keep the rule of mind, righty tidy, lefty loose. Okay, the last one. Four links are on the differential. All right, C. Let's look ahead to C. We're done with B. Let's look ahead to C. C will um, get us into uh, putting the transmission together. Um, this truck does not come with a slipper clutch at all. It's basically all direct drive. Um, like I said before. Um, I've chosen not to lock the transmission. Reason is is that well, I don't know if it's a good decision or not, but reason is is that I feel there has to be some slip somewhere. So with a differential with you know that's or a centered transmission that's differentiating uh, power to the front or rear with the front and rear locked. Um, would be better than binding actually every component on this truck. Um, it does not have a slipper clutch. Um, I did dig into the uh, the bag for the next uh, step. Uh, there's a transmission case, but you can see. I don't know if you can, but if you can see, look how beefy those damn gears are. I mean, really. This truck was meant for a giant engine with massive power and lots of fun. I can tell you that. And so far, everything I've seen is that it can handle it all. Only exception I have would be the front axle shafts, which are plastic. And uh, I guess we'll see you in time how they hold up. All right. So next time, uh, we'll be going through the uh, transmission, getting that built up. Uh, probably getting it, let's see, C, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we'll be just getting the transmission put together. Once we get the transmission put together, we'll most likely skip ahead a little bit, only because I need, even though I ordered a motor for this thing, I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. I need a a 550 can uh, motor with a five millimeter shaft and I don't have one so I'm gonna have to order it and it's gonna have to come in um, before I, I can finish that part 